Councillors, Kilda Coco, lovely to be here with you today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for all those who set aside their own concerns, who serve our communities in uh, roles of leadership and in roles uh, of service and helping around the community. We thank you for our elected representatives and for all the workers in the Community District Council and all they do to uh, help us in our lives. We pray that as they gather, to, as the councils gather today, that you'll give them wisdom and insight uh, for, during this difficult time, that you'll, they'll help it, you'll help them to discern the way ahead uh, through this crisis that we've been all facing and weathering and uh, lead us into a bright future. So Lord, as they gather, I pray that you'll uh, help them to see human concerns above all and uh, care for our people and lead them faithfully as they have been doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. We appreciate that for our first meeting back. It's always exciting to be out and about, isn't it? Just about to spill. Uh, please be seated, Nick. Try again, start talking again, Nigel, for your worship. Testing, testing, can you hear me all right? Yeah, that's good. But it maybe might be a bit quiet for some people, but you have to keep that voice pitch up quite high. Certainly. All right, we'll get uh, straight into it. So, corporate apologies. Oh, so Ross from this point. Um, and so we've not done work for those projects. Uh, that's the line, that's the work for the paper, that's how I. I'm caught in the middle of uh, zooming and raising my hand and uh, saying hi. So <laughs> it's a move back, isn't it? Who would have thought there could be these challenges? Uh, no public forum. Uh, identification of urgent business. Uh, uh, identification of matters of our nature. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put the Heritage Centre in a little project in that my nature for. Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, and we'll move through to the uh, Declaration of Conflicts of Interest. Uh, the the Council Group, can you just raise um, the sponsor to note? Yeah, uh, yeah, this is just something here around Crowley and Bird and Rush and Eric Dryer. Yeah, cool. So I think it's just a point of note, noting it's uh, uh, 110 increased funding. Uh, 
So that needs to be done with yeah, both things. That's a good, uh, that's good. I'm just uh, sorry, so you're just in a point of order in terms of um, being uh, also in a theater in terms of that would be under the auspices of a minor nature of when we can get on that out to that certain minor nature that kind of involves in a lot of significant discussion. But at the end of the day, that's for mine, but I'm talking books out there that make modern actors a the discussion, um, no decision, um, whereas a uh, matter of doing business. So, yeah, so you can't do that. That's what I do. Awesome. Cool. I think for the point of order, no, no any other conflicts? No. Uh, Confirmation of minutes, uh, 2.1, on page 6. We'll move to that. Have a look at this. I think I've got. All those favour by Eric. Uh, 2.2 minutes of Kinder's uh, uh, current meeting. Uh, we have the date for the move in Cinder. That's a good. That's a lovely. All those in favour. Eric. Okay, so schedule the function of Kinder. Oh, sorry. I just point out um, Captain Riley was not present at that meeting. We're going to continue with. Um, make sure that we do the second on the uh, need for the other people. Um, <laughs> 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 so, the floor, for those in favor, Thank you. But on the water, I'll get these back to the floor. Um, so, moving to 8.1, uh, schedule the function of the by the executive. If you're off, it's pretty lazy to stay at home for the last two months, so um, that's right. <laughs> uh, it's not that. It's a part of it. 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 It's a can hear him okay? Just give us a thumbs up if you're okay. Yeah, cool, thank you. Um, so we now go to reports uh, 9.1, and we don't get Hamish uh, with us, so uh, I'd like to invite Councillor Gilchrist to say a few words. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm just Uh, 
remove it to there. Get the blue team involved if you like. I'll remove it to there. Councillor Wills. Uh, second of Councillor Oliver. Nice work. All those in favour? Carry. Thank you. Um, moving to 9.3, page 31. Uh, it's not a confirmation. And we've got the general. Uh, yep, that's the part. And that's the word. All those in favour? Aye. Carry. Uh, so we now move to 9.4, page 32. Uh, and we've got Fabian. Thank you, Fabian. We are. Move that. So this policy was also uh, part of that uh, review process that we're going through on the policy generally. Um, the code of conduct is uh, a legal requirement for the clinic to be honest with the one, and uh, as part of our process we've gone through a review process and we have given that in the report. Um, so that we that is a place for me that we could have this year and as part of the other the elements that we might not have and have made a few good changes to it um, that we would do about the site case that we support the dry structure format, uh, including on the um, and in the end of the site basis.
sorts of things. And that's the inclusion support that we're going to provide them with. We have uh, experts, we can talk to us all those in the Gary, thank you. Thanks, Mark. See you there. Now we're moving on to the big one. Sorry. Oh, no, I've got my website supporting the rest. Thanks, you, Paul. Uh, so, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, so, this came about at the inaugural meeting. Council resolved that it would um, upgrade, if you like, the Audit and Risk Committee reports directly to Council now as an independent chair and it would be up to two independent uh, members. The reason for that is that if you have the independent chair retire, uh, then you need a second member in order to fill the requirement. So uh, the, the director and trustee appointments committee, with the assistance of Karen Horn, who is the chair of that committee, engaged with the institute directors and undertook a uh, search for a suitable candidate. Uh, as noted there, they were presented with a, a, a list of high level candidates and have uh, nominated to Ms. Frederick, which seems to be the match. I just note that one of the policies to come back to the council is the remuneration. It is typically set at 8,000 in the remuneration policy, but in actual fact, 10,000 is really the rate, and the proposed policy is that the uh, mayor and chief have the usual discretion to remunerate the people to these appointments. Uh, it's a modest increase, and uh, I think when you look at her CV, there's no doubt uh, uh, the caliber of uh, industry. In, uh, otherwise, take the report is read and take the uh, uh, yeah, Just uh, echoing the fact that it's uh, been part of that process, and um, it, it adds a, another level of, um, of compliance for us in the overview, bringing in some really good skills. Um, these people are quite caliber, and um, the money that they get paid to do that um, is minimal, to say the least, and they carry out high level of risk as being part of that. So, you know, really go to that sentiment around the $50,000 um, uh, in terms of the slight increase there, and also, uh, again, if I want to talk around the caliber of the people that are put in those positions, we're very, very lucky on this account of that, that happening on the English Committee for us to put that on to the uh, moment. Uh, yeah, look, um, uh, I see that um, she is a uh, one. Um, now, do we have a certain uh, school matrix that we need to see? Do we see that we can do it on here as well? Or is there any issue? How does that go? Yes, yeah, so through you, your worship, yes, there was uh, a skills matrix developed in accordance with the IMD and along with Kerry Horn out the attributes that a candidate would have. And it's not just the accounting, it's a uh, experience and skill within risk frameworks and working across different sectors at senior and governance levels to ensure that you bring people who have a really wide range of uh, skills, experience, and attributes in order to be able to have uh, to undertake the functions of providing insurance to council around the risk of financial savings and so on. And so that was done by the, and that was in part why the IOD was engaged to support that process and ensure that the skills was correct. Awesome, thank you. Look, this really is about being best practice capability to solve the council and leadership that the uh, possible uh, leadership threat. Um, now we've got a movement, Councillor Bird, Senior, Councillor Park, uh, other questions from the Zoom team, you're all good there. I've got the motion to the floor. Uh, all in favour? Yes, I are. Gary, thank you. So now moving to the big one. 
2 to 12. Then, uh, we have Pastor Don today. We will go to the next one. Um, so, I think we'll be here instead of the every last one of the graphs and the same as we can see the options for the map. Um, so, hold on one moment. Could you, could you guys hear Don at all? No, not very clear at all. If we can somehow get some clarity, I see um, all the other um, Zoomers are all. Waving the finger either up or shaking the head. No, can can hardly hear it. That's right. Yeah. You want to uh, uh, move? Um, so we're here today. Yeah, that's good. A redraft of the graph we just put up on the city server part. Um, Nigel, can I just interrupt for a second? We'll just need a bit more clarity from Donna. Can hardly hear it. Thank you. 
to work through so I think what we might do is just take some questions from the fourth agenda and then we'll um, go back and we need some more uh, discussion around the um, contingency fund but perhaps if we maybe hold that and we just start with some budget specific uh, questions. Uh, uh, this is probably true you your worship agreed I noticed in one of the notes we've got there was an increase in consultant fees of almost eight hundred thousand dollars. Can you explain how that came about? Thank you. Yeah, through you, your worship. Look, uh, there has been some extra work in areas such as the uh, water and drain team and so on to deliver some of the approaches there. And in parks and reserves. And look, the issue of consultants is always a is always a point of some contention because the concern is that you why you not use the staff. What are just some observations to make in that space? Uh, there is a place and a time for consultants, but they should be on a very tight uh, lead. Because the advantage of a consultant is being able to get those with targeted skills, specialist skills, bring them in on a very, uh, on a tight uh, brief and get them to if you like, come in and do the work and then they, uh, their services are no longer required. With staff, you tend to need to have people with quite a broad range of skills that may not always come the, the specialist skills we require. Uh, and so I, I just also know in that space that as a council, uh, Timaru District Council consistently ranks really low in terms of our remuneration costs as a percentage of total revenue when we compare to comparable councils. And so it's really the what we see the most the uh, targeted way to get the resource to deliver the services that we have, and there are a number of problems in some of those uh, areas such as administration and so on.
just going forward because I don't want to look at what's gone in the past. For the next financial year, would we be able to somehow track the cost, overall cost of consultants, legal fees, and other professionals that we're not having in the house? I'm just interested to see what that number in fact is. Yeah, through you, Your Worship, we certainly can uh, do that. And uh, in actual fact, we are uh, not frequent to get requests for some of those sort of expenses from various partners as well. So we certainly can. But I think, again, just a point to note one of the ways we have uh, reduced the expenses, the operating costs, is by taking on a bit more risk as an organisation, where in the past we might have been uh, inclined to go and get some advice, whether from uh, lawyers or consultants or whatever. Here, I think we're going to have to, one of the areas we will reduce our spend is by taking on that risk. And so um, that, is, that is one way we have done it, but mm -hmm. it's not our profile, uh, and we will have to find ways to bring out that. But back to your original question, yes, we um, can track and record those costs uh, for the benefit, not just of the council, but others who have interest in it. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Look, and I think it would be beneficial too, the project between the some of those costs are Uh, so, any other questions? Uh, Thank you, Worship. Um, look, I, I the start and work has gone into getting this stuff uh, checked at the right rate. I was down to 3189. Uh, thank you for the work you've done for several times and, uh, and, and you've done a superb job. Uh, it's just that I just, um, in the course of time, as we've all been thinking about lots of things to go through where we are now, uh, I have been, you know, I do wonder whether. There was one more move we could do as a council, um, and that would then involve not only cutting the estate reform, but may involve using some of the uh, um, savings that we've made over many years as a council uh, as a one off uh, effort to, to, to perhaps bring the rates down a few percent. And that would involve, in my rough estimate, a hundred dollars. And I would propose, propose that we should bring that out of reserves and use that for the investment too. And I think that would be appreciated. I think, in the spirit of what's going on now, and in the spirit of what's going on here, that there's a kind of state that's been made by that over the years. Um, I think it's very appropriate that we look at seriously breaking down the food with a million dollar injection out of the world. not worrying. Uh, if they're not worrying down this world or this New Zealand, it might be down for a minute. Uh, we can afford to build our reserves, and I would propose that we discuss potentially. To do that. Thanks, thanks, Lyme. Uh, we appreciate that. Councillor Booth. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just wonder where all this is going to end. I mean, uh, it might take uh, up to last year for the um, certain rates that was needed, uh, that was going to be at 7.5% of the rates. They settled on 4.7% of the rates. Um, and here we are, we were supposed to make an improvement, and here we are talking about being supposed to do two. So, is, how can we carry on doing this? I just don't understand. You just can't operate that the money is going to just get used in these words. I mean, the real issue is that we need to get on to the main issue, which is actually what's driving these increases. Which is a uh, charge per sale cost. Two thirds of these costs are extra overheads within our corporate overhead. So I guess that's of concern to me. We actually need to tackle that. And uh, in a business, you just can't let numbers like this actually just run around. You need to get them, especially now that you're seeking bigger success. Thanks, Councillor Thank you, Worship. Um, I'd like to thank the Council for also proposing this um, third amendment draft and plan. And we are having a one month meeting here at the end of the year, which was not seen at the long term plan when we decided to place. Another item was 
stage really where the next storm that Mark is saying boat. And I and I totally agree with that and I can talk out the line and um and looking at alternative options to try to further reduce rates, um, you know, significant stress and uncertainty, job losses already and future job losses or future job losses, job losses. So um, I would be very supportive of looking at an alternative way to support um, the rates to be reduced further um, for for you know, throughout the public consultation. Thanks, Mr. Barbara. And you make a good point uh, around public consultation. So, you know, we've got three weeks of consultation. We want to get feedback from the public. And I'm sure there'll be uh, lots of uh, no rates, uh, negative interest rates, and all that sort of thing. Uh, like a negative rate. Pass on that. Yeah, look, a lot of work has gone into this. And We've, um, we've been all sitting around this table and we understand the environment that we're facing. And we have to cut our clock to, um, to understand and reflect exactly where that is. Um, people are looking for us um, for leadership and they're looking for us for direction. And, uh, and, and so, from that perspective, um, I know that um, Councillor um, Frank is very good point um, around aspects of the budget that needs to be addressed and, and certainly. Going forward, and again, um, Councillor Bank as well, throughout what we need to do, especially going forward um, and understanding some of that risk we will have to take on board. However, in terms of that, we've, we've still got the potential of these um, of significant monies that we would otherwise have to put out uh, for these uh, shovel ready um, projects that we've got, and there's potential here. And I know it's uh, at the stage only, but a, a very a real and live one around uh, the government coming to the party and enabling us then to be able to have the monies that is going to uh, um, back these calls up in terms of, of a very low rate rise. I, I support um, whatever we can do within the contingency that we have um, uh, within the scope of our budget to, to really reduce uh, the rates down. Uh, bearing in mind that central government has given us a really good steer that is TA, we must balance our books, we must be sensible, we must have monies if it means rate increases going forward because they will only support local district councils uh, in terms of funding that are being sensible. So we have to be mindful of that, but I again, I support uh, the motion uh, put forward for the, the notion, I should say, being put forward by Councillor Lyon. Sweet, what's the motion? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any more discussion on the oh, sorry, Councillor Yeah, I would just like to say so thank you and start with the huge amount of work that's gone into introducing drafting and redrafting and changing it to change the numbers over and over again. And I, I support um, Councillor Lyon, and I think this is really about balance. We really need to find the balance between being able to do the things we need to do and drive the economy, but also the council as well as the community. And I think. Our community have, have put this money away, really, really big money in a lot of ways that we've been looking after, and today is rain day. And I think if we can if we can use our rain day funds to pop the global community while still being able to get on to the good work, then I fully support Councillor Ryan's motion. I'm not going to do the motions, but um I think uh, we've had some discussion and there's a couple of things that uh, going to include uh, reserves, so I think that I don't you know, uh, think the discussion on the same side as well. Um, Councillor Rowan. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, I, I would like to see it, um, some of the funding you know, that are out of the I, I support Councillor Rowan in the motion. That, um, and I firmly believe that uh, the, the reserves were there for the and, uh, and I can uh, we all do thank the previous council for being um, good savers and able to have the money in the kitty. So I would support some money coming out of our reserves for the rainy day. And uh, I believe the fact that we can do that. That's boring, isn't it? Um, before I go to um, Councillor Pennington, I just want to discuss, uh, you know, obviously, when we're using reserves. Uh, 
So, you know, down the track, we can look to pay back reserves, but we don't have to, even that trip back. What does a general machine reserve get? Okay, thank you for that. Sorry, we'll go do it. So just please understand that um, the reserves, a lot of build-up reserves that we make decisions in relation to the reserves effectively is not a uh, So we can use the money, we don't have to borrow, we can use those reserves now, um, selling options basically, and then um, we can rate to build up reserves or rate back if we want to say one of those things. Um, some of the options. Councillor Pitty. I guess I'm a little bit concerned that we've just generally dropped to an extent. We're, we're running a business of sorts and we need to look within our budget. My problem with dropping to 2% is I'm sure we are going to get other requests outside what is already in our budget. And perhaps even from around this table, there might be other requests. So I'm just not sure how far we can dip into reserves without materially affecting things going forward. And I know Councillor Burke uh, has said that the government said, you know, zero rates are off the table, basically, if you need support from us. So I'm just saying we need to be uh, very cautious before we start slashing stuff. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Burke. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm quite um, interested in the discussion of reserves. I thought we had a deep issue of around $40 or $50 million. Um, and, and most of that money, we've got money in the bank that's keep against projects or accounts for replacement and it's been through the depreciation issue. So I guess um, we owe money and whatever we do, we're going to borrow that money. Just keep that in mind. The product will all right. Well, we're just going to increase the debt. Yeah, okay. Uh, did you have any point, uh, David? Those points? Thanks. 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 Um, so, Councillor Pitty, you said that the threat is going to be borrowed from outside. Is it just depends, if you decide to borrow money from outside, it's going to be borrowed from outside. It's always going to be an option to choose the product, but the issue here is always going to be a future for a relationship. Uh, yeah, Nigel, if that's okay, I just um, I just agree with Stu and, and Pete around um, central government's advice regarding the rates. Um, I'm too a bit wary of dropping them as low as uh, what some of the other councillors are saying. Um, but you know, I think there is a little bit. I'd, I'd prefer there is a little bit of wriggle worm, personally, um, but I'm not too sure with going to as low as two percent is quite um, is, is cutting it a bit too fine. Thanks, Councillor Oliver. Uh, Councillor Oliver, you want to comment? Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. There's no doubt that it's going to have a significant impact on the community moving forward, and I think we can't determine how the long term is going to look at this particular time because we don't know where our economy is going to be. But more importantly, I think as a council, we should take some ownership and some leadership around this. And more so, we've got to come to a, an agreed, I suppose, figure moving forward that we can look at the community as a whole and go, well, how can we actually help them move forward? But whether that is by either borrowing money or dipping in into our reserves, I certainly would like to have some real good discussion about which would be the most significant for a, um, I suppose, less impact further down the line. Because the reality is we still need to have our infrastructure and everything else that we're aiming towards to be either work fixed and continue basic day-to-day -day operations within council. If we fail to meet those and they get, ne get neglected, further down the track, it's going to cost us more anyway. But I'm also very conscious of the fact that a lot of our community are harnessing the or pulling the belts in a wee bit as well and we've got to do our wee bit to contribute but how that looks i'd be more comfortable taking some money out of reserves and borrowing money i get nervous every time we as a council talk about borrowing borrowing even though it's very low interest rates at the moment 
we've got some reserves there. I think it'd be key from my perspective to limit the impact that our rates increase is going to be. And whether that's at anywhere between three and four percent, I'm quite comfortable with that because the reality is we need to have that money coming in. Most people who are responsible homeowners will have already budgeted for that moving into the new financial year as well. And I think it's significant that we've got to take some ownership and leadership around this. So again, we might have to have some more discussion about the percentage and maybe where that comes from. Maybe if there's anyone else that's got any further in or understanding around the borrowing versus our reserves, what's going to be really better off for us as a community and a district council. Okay, thanks council. What I want to do now is um, I'm just shift over to the likes of stimulus funding because I'm not just there. Uh, or sorry, uh, the contingency fund that was set aside for discussion on that was for the conscious, uh, that is also reserve funding. And where I think we just need to, sorry, that's my view, Tom. Thank you, Worship. Um, I think that I understand what you're saying about the need to do a limit and the time. But the reality is this is a very tough step. Um, this is rewarding um, our rate payers because we can reward our rate payers equally. For a, a drop in, um, in, the, in the voted rate target, and there's an opportunity to do that. Uh, the stimulus one will be there for a lot of people, so we'll take winners and losers, and if that's the most nice support for the stimulus fund. But this is, you know, I think, the better discussion to continue the rate, the potential percentage before we do the stimulus, because that's the whole point. Don't worry about that. But the reality of it is, this needs sorting out now because we either want to support. Total base of rate pay and citizens of every rate pay we support every other citizen in the district. And this is an opportunity for us to show that we can, because we have the money available, we can help them just once at this once. Um, it's not an expectation that we can carry on doing, but the reality is we can do it now. And you know, I, I, I would really like to test the audience by moving motion that um, we recommend that um, the rate rise uh, that goes out of consultation uh, should be 30%. Uh, we'd like to do it now because I feel it's two different things. You will get every citizen this way. We won't get them this way. Well, thanks for the motion. For the motion, on the vote. Motion, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bird. Yeah, I was just, just going to add to that. I, I don't think we can actually sit here and say that we even know. Um, the depth that this may go to, and, and to say that people may have budgeted for this, um, I don't think we can even, they don't even know. Um, there are people now in an extremely tenuous situation across Paracombi and a few people in front of the headlines where, where these are placed um, in most areas just because of what we are in terms of how we present ourselves through our uh, uh, workforce, the, the types of, of um, the industry we have, the agriculture we have. So we don't, I don't think we can actually sit here and think that people have a action budget or even not understand the deficit is going to go in. I think we need to cut it off to, to represent the potential for this, and I would second um, the interest rate of 30%. Interest rate. Interest rate. Interest rate. Interest rate. Um, okay, so uh, with a motion, Council Work, did you? Thank you. Uh, yeah, look, I guess um, yeah, you, you've got to consider we're also going to put out two million dollars contingency fund as well, which is four percent of our rate base. So um, you know, you, now we look at reducing our rates by two percent, another two percent. Uh, you know, I'd like you to see that rate. Uh, number state and that's the extra money to go towards that contingency fund. So we put it in the stimulus fund. So if that's the case, rather than just the small bits and pieces. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask for any more commentary around that, and that's part of why we've um, got the beautiful isolation that we do. I'm not going to vote on shortly. Uh, I actually want to hear what your thoughts are on the stimulus package because I don't think we can swallow this money 
the team once here, once here, once here. I'd like to hear from your worship what your idea is before I move anywhere on that. Yep, in regard to that. So, so my thoughts around some of the needs that we've all had as a community, and, and I think we're going to be careful to assume because I think that the stimulus recovery uh, fund that we parked probably needs something quite potentially different to all of us around the table. There was discussions, uh, you know, around uh, helping those projects, um, and I won't give an example, but we all know some of those community projects um, that might be assisted and, and could, uh, you know, get some direct economic stimulus. Uh, you know, if they were enabled to go ahead, so it's that enabled, if you like. And then also to the side, I'm conscious that there will be some needs uh, around, you know, how do we re energize uh, our not just our economy, but also our people with um, support and needs and those things. So, you know, as an example, for the rock and rock to go ahead, I think that's going to be a bit of a milestone for our community as far as, you know, having people out of the district, you know, back in our town um, without even, you know, the fact that it's a, a really good charity. So, you know, we're going to take into account what that sort of um, requirement is for us to support. And if I do, Point that I think we've got to be mindful of, as well as in um, Rich's made this point uh, before, and I think we can deal with this one um, through the point that I'll uh, talk about that Rich has made. But I think there's going to be more need for that economic development funding. However, I think we can probably um, deal with that on a case by case basis, is the point that I was going to make. So, um, yeah, I'm conscious that with the stimulus. It's probably where I sit around some of those sort of things. I mean, there's also off to the side as well, um, and maybe this is dealing with it case by case basis. But moving forward, we need to be fluid and agile um, so we can be support to support the community. So, those are probably my points. Does that help, um, Councillor Green? Kind of. Um, I'm just worried about if we're doing things on the hoop. I want an amount in that stimulus fund we've got to work with. I don't want to keep coming back to council every time someone arrives here and we've got a discussion around that, if that makes sense. I want to know what numbers in that fund, our rate payers know it's there, and that's how we share it out. Not do it on an ad hoc basis, but it costs us millions of them. Um, yeah, the I can understand exactly what you're talking about, Council Queensland. So essentially, it's very hard um, to not understand essentially what's going to be. Bear in mind the structure of the people that we put around it, but I think it's, it is ranking. Uh, and we just have to try and get the best out of it that we can. And in there, and just touch on a very good point, that economic development aspect is probably some of the stuff that, that we need to drive for it. And the key thing, again, that our Council aligns with us. Is that um, this is going to be um, driven for a, a, a number of other aspects of, of the of the community for district good, but to actually equate um, a saving and a benefit to our individual um, rate payers. The only way we can actually recognise that is through the, the rates itself. I mean, put this one side and hopefully like all the people you've got and we're putting in groups uh, recognising. Um, in this sort of thing, they're going to drive it. And bearing in mind that there is going to be an input in terms of political views and lots of this council around here that's going to go and get it in the I hope that helps. Um, so, so uh, I mean, the, the question is, and this is how it does, you know, one is generally enough, or should we be looking at these things all in isolation? Um, or, should we, or should we be looking at Lots some of the points that I mentioned around need support, economic development, should that come on the So well, those are some of the questions, and I don't necessarily have the answer, but there's a lot that we need to make that start about the answer. Well, thank you, everyone. But I'll you know, you know for a group in a number of issues to come back to here and understand this better. Should there no question about that? Uh, I'm just putting off proposing this undermined business uh uh in any shape or form. I'm trying to further get some fairness to all the citizens are going to reverse that. So if everybody shares in some of the um, 
opportunity that we can provide as a country. And this is one way we can give everybody an opportunity to be a fraction better off because we can do that. We have this money available uh, and it doesn't take away from the table what could come to this table in the future. So that is another issue over there. But this is now and uh, at two million is not enough. I guess we'd love like that again. Right? And, uh, I check the term will be put aside, and that's fine. But I think that the other third community is, you know, to, to give them this help, this money, and, 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 and move forward with that. But I would suggest you wish to put a motion. Yes. That's why I'm comfortable with that, because we can't go back to that. Uh, so we've all uh, is run up the date there. Councillor Oliver, Councillor Wills, you're up to date with the conversation. Just a nod. So we've got a motion that we're going to put to the floor. Uh, it was uh, Council Lyon and then seconded by Councillor Burke. So it was the rates rise to be 50%. That's correct. So you've got that right. It's not. So let me just get some clarification around that. You're saying that uh, moved by Councillor Lyon, seconded by Councillor Burke, it's going to be a rates increase of 2%. Is that correct? Is all you're proposing? That's what's on the table, and that's um, obviously to go through to rough, uh, rough and to go through the conversation. So it's great. So comfortable with that? Any questions before we put the motion to the floor? Everyone's uh, perfect, are they? Yep, I suppose. Yeah, that's all fine by me. So you guys, again, just give us a, a nod, mate, you did that all right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we'll put the motion to the floor. Let's raise your hands. Um, all those in favour, uh, raise your hand. Uh, sorry, but uh, there was a hand here. Uh, so, and then we'll go uh, against. Sorry, Kevin, I think you're Kevin, it's against, so, okay. Cool, and do you want um do you want that recorded? Yeah. Cool. So the motion is carried that we've got the rates of two percent through to um conversation. Right, moving on to let's uh tackle two of us. Your worship, do we need to explain now that we've stepped with that how we're going to fund it or does that come later on? So the rate I have no whether we're going to have to line it. So, uh, yes, uh, so uh, there's a there's a sort of an accounting and a cash flow issue here. Uh, what happens is council at the moment is paying about forty million dollars in cash reserve credit and debt of say ninety million. So would that be right? Eighty five or something? Uh, yeah. yeah, so we're sitting on net debt of about 40 to 45 million or something in that order. It might be a bit higher, it might be 45, 50 million or so. And what happens is the motion is that in terms of our expenses and our revenue, there is a gap. And if we go to 2%, then that gap is roughly about Three million dollars, correct? And so you are saying we will use our reserves for our savings. Now, council's reserves are made up of uh, cash is forty odd million and forty odd million dollars of those reserves, but it's also made up of things like parks, road, water networks, arts at the gallery. Artifacts at the museum. And when we come to make the decision to Councillor Boots point, we would look and say, should we borrow at say 1.9% of what we've been up to when we have funding requirements, which is normally for the projects, or should we break a term deposit depending on the interest rate we have? But each year, Council accumulates cash surpluses. So we even this year will run a very strong cash surplus because inside that budget is depreciation of 15 or 16 million dollars. 
we can break the food of the depreciation and uh, use it in future projects. So the treasury decisions that are made will be on the basis of that of what is the best interest rate that we can um, obtain at any point in time. But there is a point to be really clear about. If Mr. Harper gets his program up and running with 50 plus million dollars, and we do all the other work, we will use both some of our cash reserves, not all of them, because we maintain them, and we will increase our borrowings. But that is the position, but we are using the accumulated savings, if you like, of the district over many, many years to fund this. But does that sort of help identify how we deal with it? <laughs> Be fair to say though we're in a pretty unique situation that we're facing at the moment so again that's why we have these savings that you know this could be a once in a lifetime experience for quite a number of our people I mean, really, they haven't actually got money. They want their money back, they've got their debt. They can actually simply borrow the money. And, and, and they'll come in at the cost of the thing. Uh, thanks, Ron. Ron, just to answer the question, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going Right, what we'll do is we'll move on to the sorry, excuse me, uh, the uh, point three, which is uh, point three, which is the simplest one. So any other discussion around this? Um, please. No, so I uh, think so, thanks. I was just going to say in terms of um again, just um not to get lost on the public here. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, uh, get this party to put some context around that here in terms of how we sit provincially, regionally, and as a TA, as to how well we sit in terms of that here. Again, bear in mind in normal times where that's sat, how well we were placed, and where we sit in relation to other TAs, so that again, in this period of time of unknown and of, of the fact that we know how you know the, the effects of this, um, they've got some context around why we're doing it. Yeah, look, just to, to uh, Councillor Bird's point, we do hold about forty-five million dollars worth of debt. We could borrow. Probably 80 or 90. The council has a number, it's a very strong balance sheet. Uh, LGFA, the local government funding agency, has made that point on a number of occasions. That's why we have that credit rating in fact, We have a very conservative and self imposed debt, and we could probably borrow another 80 or 90 million dollars, not touch our own conservatively self imposed debt limit, and still be some way below the debt limit that is imposed by LGFA. So council's headroom is really extensive and a number of councils will be considerably more leveraged than us. Um, and uh, and in fact some of them, some of the large councils don't even have any debt that really they're, they're uh, backed out of it. So we're in a strong position. Just thank you, sir. Sorry, you wish for just another stand what we're now discussing. Yeah, so we're up to just let us Um and I mean there's a real argument that um you know we are in a financial position. Um central governments and local governments at the time of crisis are borrowed and uh, you know the economy. And you know, when it recovers, uh private investors take that role and uh government would then look to consolidate debt at those points. So, you know, we are in that sort of phase and, and you know looking uh, to a lot of the, the 
comments that have spoken recently to us that I think have been pretty much useful to this year. So, here's how much of a part we want to play um, in that role. But, so, any other discussion around stimulus? Uh, two million, is it enough? What we want to go to? Are we going to go to the two million? Thank you. Um, yes, I can follow up. It seems so I'm not clear, I don't think it is clear yet, whether it's going to be more economic shovel ready versus well-being social. Um, I don't see it being a 50-50 split um, from reading um, the feedback and um, you know that community will um, uh, have their opinions and consultation as well, how it may seem to make sense. I mean, uh, uh, we as a council are going to put I was going to say it's more economic, but it's um, I'm doing a lot of economic versus well being. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I just think it could be clarified a little bit. Yeah, well, it's a really, uh, yeah, really um, point. And I guess what is our role as far as funding uh, social would be the other question, although we have other players, those who are for well being. That's a good, yeah, get through those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, but it's a, it's a really good point, and you know, the likes of what we go through um, some of the things that have been supplying uh, food banks, etc., others that involve the, the business of council. I would probably say it's not, however, if the community was in such a point of need uh, that they needed that fund, they might have been likely uh, considerate to the council. Uh, so that's probably a uh, I was just going to say, in terms of say the rock and hop, we're looking at our four pillars. Um, a small investment from us, say, under that deep and development type, and we are, we're going to have to cover all the other elements, the social elements to that, the cultural elements to it, in terms of what we see our own culture now with New South Canada, um, obviously not the environmental matters, the word vehicle, but um, like we, we straddle a number of things, so, you know, so we're actually taking a few boxes if we do look at those. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, quite a lot to a few year old tree. What's that? Yeah, you got that? Sorry, it's a lot of
Yeah, look, I'm, I'm fully supportive of the stimulus uh, idea. I think uh, it's got a really good two-pronged approach. Firstly, obviously uh, stimulating the economy and secondly, um, giving us the ability to upgrade some of our facilities um, around the district. And obviously, I hear a lot of the word well-being bandied around in the council chambers. And I think uh, this is really a, a, an opportunity for the council to make a, quite a big difference. Um, to people's well-being in Timaru, that's for sure, or in the district, I should say. Um, so yeah, look, I fully support it, and I think going forward, that you know maybe even topping up, topping it up every uh, year might be an option as well, just to keep it going. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Oliver. Look, and I think you know it's been raised a couple of times in regard to you know what does the smith board, what's our role in this space. I think it's something we can quite easily bring into the LDB. Um, for discussion, so we can have time over the uh, next three years of planning. So, if this is something that we want to move forward, I'm going to be a sort of new board if we have a chance to do that. I guess I'll have a lot. So, thank you, Your Worship. I, I, I feel you know, I think it's a stimulus fund that is it covered in just the COVID, or is it an ongoing thing? And you, you've touched on that. Maybe it is an ongoing thing. And, and I, I support it, but I just I keep I just keep thinking of it being a stimulus fund for COVID just to, to get well being and people getting feeling nice for us when we at some stage when we come out maybe in a year or so's time. But you know, if this leads on to something that we will we will contribute to the community to stimulate it a little bit more funding out the way we will be our pack So it's um but, you know, we said right from the start that we needed to do something for the community because of the situation we're in. Uh, I, you know, and this is part of it. Let's, uh, let's just go forward and get something out there to help a bit of well being in the community. Councillor Wilson, do you have any comments? No, pretty much, I think we're all at the same page here. We can see the importance of having a bit of a stimuli and um, how that looks and how that's going to shape 
is really going to be dependent on what the expectations are of the community. So I suppose also with the Ignite group that we're going to be looking at, that's going to have also a bit of influence and shift and a change around that as well. So I think we've got to go in there with a pretty much an open mind if we're looking at our four pillars and how we see what that's going to do for some people and not so much on the other side. So yes, I'm all for it and quite comfortable. I don't think we want to jump too far ahead at the moment and go, we make this a regular thing every six months, 12 months. I reckon you've got to reassess, evaluate. There's got to be accountability. There's no way you can just have this money sitting there, putting it out with different projects. There's still got to be accountability for it. And we've got to see what is actually achieving it. We've got to see the outcomes for it in such a way that it meets the four pillars that we're trying to aim towards. So yes, I'm supportive of it. So no issues from that side anyway. Okay, so I think we've got general consensus. We know you're in the fund. Um, the questions are as everyone comfortable with two million at this stage taken into account. Is it, is it enough to be here? You know, two million dollars in the current environment, you know, the economy of two point five billion is is um, is, is the bottom notion. Uh, however, you know, our role um, and we're expecting our partners in central government to take up that role of uh, economics. Stimulus, stimulus and an equitable approach across the entire country. Quite the first word in this one. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll repeat this to you later. <laughs> um, so, your size of funds, uh, I'd like to understand before uh, we move on. Are you, we want to look at these. Um, the events side of things within this fund, outside of fund, economic development type of things um, that might be look, um, related to the lots they do inside of this fund, outside of the fund, we look at those um, and that's what that's us. Uh, Councillor Uh Yeah, I think it's um, it's probably the same question. I'm not sure if you're the question, but so the first fund may be with the outside. This fund, the next fund, the fund will be specifically for um, for projects, for community projects. Uh, you know, next year, the date, uh, you know, enabling future community projects. So, and uh, and, and, and if it gets to the point where it's apparently well, I mean, we could do it for the size we need to get for it, or we need to make it illegal or not. Yeah, 100% like that. Yeah, you know, that's what regulates the AD still there. Um, you know, they've still got some funds where they're going to direct their professional um, you know, uh, skills and what have you to that. And this should be specifically around you know, all those things that we can put in there that uh, we need to have. Uh, that's the question. Yeah, that's the question. I agree with both of them. It's a stimulus package. To enable projects, but I'm with Councillor Booth, it shouldn't be for the idea that once the project's up and running. You know, if we can enable a project that's good for the community, all that can be set every time. Because if that's all we have to put in, as opposed to doing the whole project themselves, the community back is quite a bit So, just as an example, the likes of sea play, maybe some sea plumbing, can get to the point. Or fundraising, would that, would that be an, a yay or a nay in that description? And if you look at a project like that as an example, could that give New South Wales a benefit? Um, you know, uh, what's the well being um, positives that come with it? Sorry, Your Worship, could you just go back? What was the first example you um, put up there? We just missed that. Uh, oh, C, uh, C plug, sorry, is in the Caroline Bay plug. Right, gotcha. Okay. Um, sorry, Councillor. I think most good projects have a base around them. People have already done that. I'm conscious I don't want the whole of my ideas coming, but then if I get off the ground, it'll be fun. I think there's a responsibility on whoever's driving the project to do something and then bring it to us once it's to a certain stage. Okay. Yeah, well, I think we can put um, within a policy, you know, at the end of the day, if it's, it's three people that's going to be signing off, if it's a subcommittee, I think we can have confidence that the decision that we've gone to um, 
we may uh, well and doubt uh, not to do it. Jump in there. Okay, cool. Um, so, just before we open the group, uh, all of us, uh, just what about the uh, based activity? I think there's a real need in the community moving forward as far as enabling that to what this in or out. That's where uh, uh, we're just going to be for a few We have not already got some uh, criteria around that already. Yeah, we've got that being specific. Uh, we, we have donations and loans, and then uh, uh, policy around events, uh, really hands free events, uh, currently after year three. Because our current policy says we'll support you in year one, two, and three, and you should be self sufficient. It doesn't dictate into things like well being for like, so economic or um, social well being for community. So, effectively, I mean, we'll have to look at that outside of policy. Um, I think it should definitely because I mean, um, it stands to reason you know, what it has produced in the past is something that was there, it was tangible, and it was predominantly um, those run and um, sponsored and contributed to by local group, and that's what uh, our community and other communities are really crying out for. We need to, you know, something to support them tangibly in that. And therefore, get all that 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 um, obviously flow back into our motels, our restaurants, our hospitality, and and also that that social and cultural component that that's all the main part. It has been something that needs to be. Thank you. So just a reminder, just to speak now, please, well, so room off the side in here. Uh, just to do you want to get to the just part? Um, I'm only for at least to be included if you take a walk and talk place to make a, a loss to hear about if they're, um, if they're uh, events not going ahead, which would not be a part of their planning as well, and a good planning um, because the stimulus plan is about stimulating the economy, so it would be a lot of problems for the not going to have that yeah, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Um, just filling in myself, I must be uh, here yeah, uh, uh, the uh, yeah, you know, I, I, it, it's very hard, you know, for us to visualize everything that we've thought of. You know, I think we're right in our way down day, and it's just things a few of us, I'm sure. But the other things that none of us would thought of. And that's what it's been so much thought of is that we've got four of us all responding to those things that we've heard. But we won't see him. We won't see it, you know, being out. Maybe he comes down, you know, tomorrow, next week, next month, six months, whatever. So that's what I think this fund's for. So I don't even think we can get around another thing. Every little event today, because the other money was. And the other thing I was going to say, Your Worship, was that uh, they suggested that the subcommittee of the year, or whatever, it might be about, we do need a council uh, in the city, so we're going to have to get that done. Yeah, thank you. 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 As an education, it would be not enough to get together to support. I think we just have to make that fluid. So we have to think about that. We might not want to be in the ownership of our community base specifically. So, yeah. Uh, Councillor George. Oh, in my great mind, I fully support the events being included. Um, I think that events we often see huge gains for small inputs and um, they kind of carry it on. Uh, at least three to four more leads, so hugely supportive of that. And I do have a fear also about things getting down much and um, people maybe not being able to move to be possible. So I think we need to be aware of that. Awesome, thank you. So, in the moment, Councillor Booth. Uh, well, the government's announced um, something like 280 million for uh, good sports, and a lot of that is going to go to uh, infrastructure for development uh, around uh, facilities uh, and the, the, the amount of beauty development, um, which is all sorts of things like that. And I think we, we should be looking at that. And that's really going to give us. Some of the projects that people have been kicking around, 
if we if we were committed to 24 percent or something like that uh, and they get 50 percent from the government it's going to really make things move so um i think just what i've heard is the kind of what i've seen now uh, you know just be ready So, so just before we uh, move this uh, thought, I do come forward with direction of this, but we're giving you too much, not enough. We want to take it, so I think we'll not be there. I think, yeah, I think so. Got the $2 million direction of funds to be project content. Thank you for the clarity around economic things, priority one versus economic underlying budget. Um, and also, we do want to say about uh, the funds we want to get by that time. So, I think where we're at, if we're going to consider it as a full council, we probably could be more open. And, you know, also within the well being framework, we can probably uh, be open and say that we don't want a um, signal that there's a full money here and anyone can come and buy it because we're going to be um, sifting through uh, lots of applications uh, for no, um, you know, no. <laughs> No good. Uh, yeah, for any of us. So <laughs> I think it's. I, I think within this we can. I think you know we're doing a draft, aren't we? So we can get a pretty good steer, and you know we can sign up potentially on uh, one of our many more input. And then yeah, do you want to sort of counter with that direction? I know that's not definitive. Sorry, Fabian. Yeah. Do you need? More? No, can I ask? Uh, Oh, yeah, thanks, Nigel. Just a question. This is obviously going to be a bit like the bloody boy, the old dyke, isn't he? He's going to be putting his finger in the hole to try and keep it all back because we're going to have a big influx of people trying to get a slice of the pie here, if you like. And um, to a certain degree, are you going to put some structure around, or should we look at putting some structure around very early in the piece about the governance group who's going to manage and look at and accept and overview the applications when they come in? Yes. Yeah, we'll need to erect some structure out for sure. Yeah, because I and I think most probably sooner rather than later, because once this gets out of the media, you can get absolutely guaranteed it's, it's going to be a flood of um, applications coming into that area. And I just don't want to be sitting around there two, three months later on down the track and we're still holding hands with the old boy holding his finger in the dike and we're not achieving anything at all. So we've got to make sure that we are prepared for it and we're ready to go as soon as possible. stimulus came through major projects. So I'm going to suggest the projects don't be over quarter million dollars. So with maybe as Don's point, we'll get inundated with rats and mice, and I don't think that's a bad one. But we've got to have not that we contribute necessarily to 50, but the, the project's got to have some real value, otherwise every place in will want to play with it. And I'm not saying that's bad, but that's not the idea of what this is. And I also think we need a number on what percentage we would contribute to something. So the council isn't seen as a 
hundred percent bumper itself as well. So my number would be two hundred and fifty k, and we as a minimum for a project, not economic development, we contribute a maximum of twenty five percent. Thanks, uh, yeah, I think the right throw is um, a number to support that, and I guess the question is whether that what that excludes and is um, that here go to council line to do council line. Well, thank you, Lisa. I mean, to me, that just takes away some of what this council is doing with Danish Falls. There are some people who manufacture a cause that's worth about 250,000, and in fact, the market of the is about 80,000, crucial for some people in the community. So, well, I, I think we're taking away, and what we're trying to do is get the well of everyone. Simply be a few more things for us, I don't know, that's no minimum. But to, 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 to put the burden on it out of 2 million, it's a obligation, isn't it? So, I think it's just been out, just taking away from that kind of thing, it might simply not. I would have thought that if um, a panel of, of the community that gets involved uh, and, and it sits through somebody who can bring those things to us and does the, the, the groundwork of the, the, the good people who do, uh, and then we sort through from there. But it's clear, it's so critical to start. I mean, half the things they say will be the last. So, um, I certainly see the point of the cap, uh, Thank you, Richard. Yeah, I um I, I like your idea of supporting the project because I think the stimulus fund was there to help small groups get have something in the vent to um you know, rock and pop is another story, but you know, some of the communities might want to have a a um a party. Of some sort, you know, and I thought some of that money was going on the the thought was, our thought pattern was to help an event happen and the um, just not put a finger on it. And, and I know the rats and mice that we might get it in to, to recover that, but I, I, I feel putting a finger on it to make the project, yeah, fine, you can do that, but someone wants to run the event, it's going to cost $10,000. We help them with them and that thing. So I think that's what the students are going to do. Yeah, but I think the event side thing is probably here with the policy and the market that's probably just a smaller um, amount. Um, that's the uh, purpose. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I don't like the idea of um, the second that's getting together like a $250,000 value. And that's like, I definitely support that we fund that we get together and that's lovely. So please, I'll just keep it up. But I think limiting things to a project of value of 250000 might, uh, we might miss out on some other really good things that have value and it is a good point that you can do. Um, but also some other really valuable um, economic stimulus and smaller projects that you know, make several knowledge and I think that we really be doing a disservice by limiting it to those who really are. I'm not, I'm not against keeping a, a limit, but I just think that's a bit high. I think um, the percentage of the good qualities are excluded from you know, some of the rest of us because it's not one that you can just come to, you get free money. You've actually got to have a bit of a you know, track record behind you. Um, so I think that would probably be a little bit, um, you know, potentially to exclude um, you know, some, some pain later. And, and there again, you know, the, uh, Point. Um, I'm busy with council from my meeting. Um, <laughs> that's a heavy with us. Um, you know, I think it's really you know, we don't, a lot of people come to us, they have education, and just say, oh, you know, it's never about that. So, yeah, uh, Council Burke, you Council Burke, you've got some work to do. Yeah, probably a way to try and force to get a tail stand. Yeah, I'll argue that it's quite obvious that there's maybe if we just had on the um on the uh so economic social cultural and environmental committee we just put a, a weighting on that we're looking at any project that has this significant um and that has a weighting around predominantly push towards 70 percent of the weighting would be around economic development so in other words it has to have a real tangible economic impact 
on a broader scale than just you know um you know this group or that group or that but and then it is the way that those gangs can be put. So so that way at least then you know, it gives us bear, bear in mind that we've got this other beast sitting here um, and uh bringing an external view into it um that can feed back into us as well. So it's giving it's giving us a means to view all these things through from being back to the council and then adding that weighting I think would uh, maybe alleviate some of the concern here. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, the um, convenience something is separate. Um, we are not just talking about these. Um, I, I usually think that um, the projects that you are free to call sites or projects to be here, yeah, that's the sort of time that I believe that this should be done for your community to get the information done. Um, and that feeds into a whole lot of stuff that uh, we're trying to achieve is say hub you know, the hub of the south, hub of the south line and, and helping to attract people here for things such as building the beach and having the best facilities and the best uh, setups for our uh water development to attract them and obviously for our own development and that all the well being of the public that means we've got no issues at all. You know, nothing better than good wholesome sport activity for everyone. It's a catch it's a catch card. It's a wholesome sport for everyone. <laughs> um sorry, is it just before we but let's move us on. Um commentary uh, around the social sorry that weighting and that's no uh we're comfortable with the sort of weighting that Pete's alluded to and that 70 percent uh being economic or does that exclude anything um you know socially that we should be doing um please uh please put your uh best words forward rather than just brown what's the part would you like to make a point oh sorry I'm not sure what the right number is. Yeah, I don't think that's a really valid point, so you might be able to show that. That's for a pursuit of fun that council line. Um, well, I can keep your emotion or emotion either. Here's this, Your Worship. Can I get you to go back? Was it um, Barbara or Sally that was just talking before? We didn't catch her anything that she was raising. Okay, so it was um, Councillor Parker, and she just mentioned uh, one that we're going out to the consultation for this, so we'll be getting community feedback. So I'm sure if there's you know, social groups specifically or environmental groups that, um, which is a really you know good point, uh, you know, that could come up with the money for the project. Um, that they will feed that into our consultation, but she made the point also that it could be um, quite heavy towards the economic of 70%. But the point, I guess, is we have it in there at 70%, and then the, uh, then the um, uh, great people of the Timber District will give their feedback. So, are you on next? So yeah, so was that for the stimuli package? Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. Just clarifies it. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Councillor Long. I'm just going to say that I agree with Councillor Park's approach. Um, so, it still makes sense to go on that. But, um, yeah, that's the first thing I would do. Yeah, okay. Look, well, um, I'm going to move that. We've got enough around that, I think. Not quite. So we're looking for some restrictions of uh, 25%. Oh, sorry, so it's supposed to clarify the weight and you know, that's actually worked. So I agree that there's having um, an outcome based investment is a low approach and that's a priority. But unless you're doing a contestable round, we've got a minimum criteria. I'm just trying to think through the weighting that actually works in practice. So um, you're not comparing proposals. For example, we're not coming to the minimum threshold. Yeah. Um, 
sort of comfortable around that sort of wording. Yeah, I won't ask what you do. Can you talk to the catch of that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I uh, have to move that. I uh, have a second that, Councillor Burke. Uh, all those in favour, uh, Zoom raise your hand, I will say aye. 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 Gary. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we've got a few other points. We just need to clarify where the end of plans are just going to take one. So take off the rage part, which is um, point two. Uh, we've done point three. Um, we need to note point one. Uh, we need to, well, we need to discuss the other back row. Um, then, Others can probably be moved together. So let's discuss the Orari back row and then the balance I believe can be moved um, together if we go to those points. Um, so discussion around Orari back row. And unfortunately, I will put it up to Councillor Old to be the as well. Arari back row, yeah, look, um, I, I can see real benefits for Arari back road um, being sealed. Um, obviously, I um, gave you my thoughts last time, but, um, you know, I think it's been a long time in the making. We're sitting right at the top of the of the tree, and we've been sitting there for some time. Um, obviously, the road is becoming uh, a bit unusable at times. So, uh, look, it's got real economic benefits for uh, the whole district, really, you know, as far as the trucking firms go. Um, as far as the longevity of the corridor between um, Arari Bridge and Winchester, um, you know, with the new roundabout, it really justifies that new roundabout now, um, if that was to happen and if that was to become a, a heavy vehicle route. Um, and, yeah, so, look, I, I, I totally are behind getting this done. Um, it's been a long time. I've had a lot of conversations with people about this in the last six months, and they've been bringing it up and bringing it up. So... It would be great to get this through today, and um, I think that uh, it'll be a real benefit to uh, not just Geraldine, but to the whole district, you know. And and hopefully we can see more of these roads that become uh, to become sealed after this, um, because there's definitely a lack of funds there for seal extensions. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally behind this today, and hopefully we can get this across the line. Well, thanks. And, um and I'd like you want to answer this, and, and thank you also to uh, Andrew Dixon, who I can't see, I'm sure he's listening to me, and you come up with any questions. Uh, it was really good background information around the CF extension priorities, so to, um, and so if we are looking to move this ahead, uh, what is the funding method that we are going to do? Is this loan funding, or is this the loan? Oh, can I just ask, I was going to ask a question, um, we had this meeting um, at that stage, it wasn't eligible for NBA and NBA financial assistance. Was the 
COVID-19 and other government um, policy funding to the teaching costs that would be eligible now? That's probably a question, Andrew or Eric. Oh, thanks, Eric. Yeah, I can, I can talk to that. Uh, the Councillor Parker, the likelihood is still quite low that it would obtain um, a FAR for that, so that, or financial assistance. Thank you, Councillor Parker. Councillor Parker, you're on mute. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I Oh, sorry, Councillor Wine, as well. Apologies. Oh, no, no, you think there's a bit of time? I'm sorry, you just can't be able to do that. I can't be able to do that. Yeah, thanks. And then we'll go to the stage. So, thank you. So, there's a fund there of $300,000 that's been paid for another extension, which will be done before the council. So, of course, this is a new road eventually. That can uh, all be justified as a new road we've got to work. And uh, effect on rates in this new upcoming year for the Zorro governments? Um, if it works um, next year, if it's the year after, so if we effectively take their loan out of the period and the interest rates will be on, and it also be the retraction loan. Thank you. So sorry, I put the bill out. Um, Council Booth and Council Mark. Uh, more questions to uh, Council Oliver. Oliver, uh, we had a special meeting at the school committee by the principals around uh, the upgrade of the I'm just going to pop over with that. Around the uh, Arundel Belfield Road. And just for instance, if that was, and at that point we had, uh, we could have had into the A home. I spoke to Andrew James, who did it for the Dom, the Dom Council. Uh, if that road was to be upgraded, uh, instead of the, um, the rail back road, uh, would that pick up that traffic that's traveling down here now? Uh, well, look, I barely heard you then, Alan, but I, I sort of got the gist of your question. Look, I think that, um, the traffic that travels along the Arari back road is completely different to the sort of traffic that will be traveling along the uh, Arundel Belfield road. Um, it is a, it's a cut through road uh, between Arari and Arari bridge. Um, if you were to go through to Mayfield from Arari and use Arari Belfield road, you'd have to actually backtrack. So there'd be no greater uh, gain from selling the Arari, uh, sorry, the Arundel Belfield Road. Um, the good thing about selling the Arari back road is that all the link roads beyond the Arari back road have all been um, uh, all, all been upgraded in the last couple of years. So you're looking at the Arari Station Road from Arari back road up to Coach Road, then along Coach Road's all been upgraded for heavy traffic. And then of course we've got the new roundabout going in on Jordan Winchester Highway and uh, at the end of Coach Road. So at the end of the day, by getting this done, there's actually no further work really required um, as far as heavy traffic goes. Um, so yeah, so I think to answer your question, we couldn't see any really, you cannot, we couldn't see really any benefit doing Arundel Belfield Road for the, the 40 vehicles that travel along there that are mainly just cars and people cutting through from the Arari Bridge uh, possibly through to Arundel or something like that. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bird. Councillor Lyons. Well, thank you, Richard. Look, first of all, I want to be clear. I mean, this does or does not qualify for funding. Uh, Sorry, just a question on this, Alania. Uh, does this qualify any for, um, financial assistance uh, funding through? NZTA? No, it, it normally would not. Um, NZTA um, is, has indicated to us currently that they would not provide funding for this project. Well, that's an important, that's an important place to start. I'm understanding the cost, isn't it? 
Yeah, so the full cost would be on council for the seal extension. <clears throat> Yeah, so thanks, Councillor Lyon. Councillor Hood, I guess that's where I was going. The fact that um, we've been offered money 49% of their own roof to be upgraded, which was going to be about $800,000 for us, and we've taken care of a, a problem which has been identified by the Deputy Extraordinary Committee. Um, so, um, but yeah, that's what I was getting at. And uh, yeah, one point two million. Uh, so, any other conversation? We don't currently have any motion on the floor. Uh, is there a motion? Just to clarify, we're looking at about not touching the extension money for the project. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so the extension money is not going to be for the Scale extension fund for next year, so we can do that as, uh, as part of so that. Am I correct in saying that? So that should be 300,000. Eric, are you going to uh, jump in on, on that? Because we get, uh, we get some unused budget from this year, but probably not such an next year, so we still have 300,000 and we haven't committed to Spur Road because we were looking at this as a priority, obviously, waiting for those uh, information to come from Andrew with the chairs. Eric, uh, have you got commentary on that? Is that correct? Uh, yes, there, there is, I uh, didn't quite hear the whole question, but there is some remaining funding in this year's budget that we could utilize. So do we have the numbers of you, utilizing this year's budget, next year's sale extension, and then what would we need to uh, bring to the table with my question, so where what's the total value of the 1.2? So does anyone have those numbers in front of them at all, which is sale extension, the 300 in this year budget, what is left this one? Um, and then that might bring the cost down to 700 potentially, and where the council wants to consider that. I think I'm on the right track, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, is that, is that, uh, so that's my understanding, is that what you're about to say? Right. No, my point is that we're using the CLF section. Um, that's not considered uh, currently with this 1.2, is it? It's, 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 no, so we can't really out, so that needs to have a lot. Yeah, through, through you, Your Worship, there's 100K left in this year's budget. Yeah, so that's this year. So if you miss it, so we're on the Taking that 400 off the cost of 1.2, uh, which would mean 800,000, if I'm correct, would be the cost that we would have to loan fund. Makes sense to me. Yeah, that's not it. Two times, so makes sense to others. And so that would be what we would be considering. So we consider using next year's seal extension, this year's current seal extension, it's left, and 800,000 loan fund. And that's probably how I would um, encapsulate it, if you like. Uh, well, I was just going to suggest that uh, uh, question to Andrew. Um, what was the cost that we've maintained for him? Um, it's pretty well, that money's going to cost 36000 per hour for the money to build it. So, really, uh, if it's somewhere around there, we'll probably still have more. What's the practical approach? Uh, Councillor Good? Yeah, I oh, sorry. Um, Probably here. Yeah, I don't have the specifics on the cost, but it's uh, used extensively by heavy vehicles. So there's a high maintenance cost at the moment uh, for grading. Uh, we grade it about every two weeks. Um, and the wearing course, we renew that about every two years. 
benefits here. I think if you look to the original um, paper that came through, it had a higher cost associated with it. We must have noted that it isn't even um, it had, The road has a quite extensive, it's one of our highest cost um, unsealed roads in the district to maintain. It's because of the high numbers of heavy vehicles that are using it. I don't have the exact cost, but yeah, I think it's around about um, it's thirty to forty thousand dollars per annum. Okay, so we're we getting sort of some clarity on that. So I'm comfortable to move. Actually, oh, sorry, Councillor Wills. Uh, thank you, Worship. <clears throat> um, look, I've listened to the debate discussion. No, I'm a bit like Gavin. I only pick up snippets of it, but at this particular time, I think if we're looking at our budget and also we're looking at spending $1.2 million on a road that, yes, it's got some reasonably high volumes of traffic, but I don't know where it sits under, and I still haven't been convinced that it is actually part of our um, extraordinary circumstances and it meets that criteria. So I'm more inclined to think if we would be budgetally, fiscally wise at this stage that we don't spend that $1.2 million, we keep the upgrades up, and that we can aim towards a two or three year project around getting this here sealed but certainly not at this particular time when we're talking about how many trucks i think somebody mentioned trucks cars 100 vehicles a day is that correct devon yes yeah yes. over 100 at times steve between 70 yes. and 115. i'm more inclined to think that for the greater benefit of our whole district that 1.2 million dollars be better sitting in our coffers at the moment so we can determine and be more concrete about where we're going to spend that money because again i spoke about it earlier on we don't know what our forecast is going to be like both mid and long term so that 1.2 million is mostly better off sitting our coffers we keep the maintenance up on the road maybe a bit more regular you know what we're talking about 30 40 thousand a year i understand your arguments gavin i do support them but i just think in the very unique circumstances we're sitting at the moment moving forward i think we'd be better off having that in our coffers and even if we've got that extra hundred thousand dollars unallocated that we need to mostly just be very cautious about how we go. Everyone else has been trimming their budgets back in the different areas. So hence, I'm not necessarily in the support of the actual um, funding of the road to be sealed at this particular time. So that's sort of where I sit with that at the moment. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, councillors, for that. But I guess where I sit on it is, you know, one of the one of seems pretty positive messaging out there. This is economic stimulus uh, for that district. We can do it within existing budget plus and by funding um, and also it's cost neutral um, based on you know what we've heard of the maintenance so that's where I sit and I'm happy to let Councillor Oliver from Geraldine um, move a motion or a motion if he wants to it's, it's sit with him that so pass it over to oh sorry Councillor White. I just yeah I just I can't hear Richard Sorry. Yeah, look, I'd like to move the mission that we uh, carry out a seal extension, obviously, on the Arari back road. Against. 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 Against.
Yep, that's fine. Well, thank you. Thanks, uh, team. Okay, so let's get thank there. you. Your worship, was that carried? Because those in the Zoom couldn't see the others. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I didn't use it. It was carried. Let him spread all Make sure you read the newspaper. Stuff.co.nz. Um, or you can just search that a little bit, I think it will come up as well. Okay, so we need to get through some points. So we've got uh, two, uh, we'll check two, three, and uh, uh, oh, see, two, three, and four. So we just want to move one in such note. Um, is that three time or two, three, or four? No. So we've got one um, and six, which is a dot open document, um, to the table, seven, eight, and nine. Um, so we carry characters and zero uh, questions. Maybe can you group that together? Nine point six. Uh, so I'm talking about nine point seven, but the um, possibly we still need to um, push through. So we've got, so we've done um, two, three, and four, which is the uh, rate uh, increase in the contingency fund in the front row and back row. So we still need to uh, work out that limitation. So that's page, sorry, page 83. So we haven't confirmed all that, so uh, that business. Yeah, all right. So we haven't. So the first one we haven't actually confirmed. So let's um, uh, not it's the effect of COVID. So I think we can uh, move these items together. Um, so we've confirmed point two, which is the rate increase, the um, growth occupation. Uh, three, the contingency fund, and four, which is the rate of that growth. Uh, so we still have to confirm the others. We can probably group that. Uh, Got a bit of the gist, but difficult to pick up in between. I don't know whether Gavin heard it either. Yeah, it was. I picked up bits and pieces, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, general, I've got a About the consultation process. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so look, I mean, your general consultation process three weeks from now, 
safety dates are in here. Um, so basically, just the process of going to the community. So um, nothing uh, you know, untoward. Um, yeah, no, that pretty much Don was talking to the document that we got in front of us there. Is that the one you're talking about? That can't see what we've got there yet. Uh, what's on the um, page 83, is it? 82, 83, that document? So what Donna, that was pretty much what Donna was reinforcing through those recommendations. Yes, that's correct. Correct or not? Okay, yep. All right, okay. Um, that's the one. Thank you. I'm just a question on board. So it didn't work for the time for the you know, one that supports it, you know, for the time of waiting. So for example, do we need to tell the story or do we need to make the story very clear? Well, I think we all must have to get to that uh, set of steps. Uh, yeah, so it's the So we probably just need to clarify. Um, Couldn't hear anything, unfortunately. So, Rich just making a point that we just need to clarify uh, point four, which should be around um, 100 of the current funding from the seal extension, the uh, 300 from next year's seal extension budget, uh, and loan fund the balance uh, for um, that. And so, do we need to? Yes, so, who is the um, who moved that one? That was that. Oh, sorry, of course, council. So, did you hear that, council? Just need to uh, correct that motion. Are you comfortable with that? So, just the wording that uh, 100,000 from this year's budget, 300,000 from next year's budget, and then the balance is loan. Yes. Cool. And uh, councillor uh, Booth, you were happy with that as well. Cool. So, we'll just put that back to the table. Everyone's comfortable with that. And have you looked at the submission for that position? And Councillor Wills, you were still against that, okay? That's all right, no, I'll go with it, that's fine. Yeah. Change it. No worries. So um, everyone's for, so the motion's guaranteed uh, for that point, Richard. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Councillor Wills. I'm just looking at the next point. Uh, after the Arari, that bank I see on there is the Airport Car Park extension, which we actually have a verb, I know, of a value of 63000 So I really know it's probably a good time to actually be able to do it. It's going to need to be done. It's going to be reasonably quiet out there, and the stuff is getting done. So I guess that's uh, just a point. Is that the right? No, but we'll just say something. So from Airport Park. Page 85. Uh, okay, so do the So, I wish the to the bring that back in. Now, it explains the line. Well, we are going to do the run the run rate being done, shouldn't that actually be done at the same time? Look, it's an interesting point. It's about um, balancing um, the need and yeah, who knows what the previous guys could have looked like as far as demand on the car park. And anyone knows as such. Well, it's a good point. Um, did you also get that? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's an extent. And we've only got four flights checked to pay down the out this month. But it will happen. It seems a bad amount of money. So you actually try and do it on the flights of that other place. I don't know if they're talking about the second council agreement. Yeah, look, I'm comfortable agreeing. So that, are you happy to move that motion, Councillor Um Yeah, and Councillor Biddington. So just so you're clear, so that was about um, page 85, 10.5. Uh, it was 
airport car park extension of 63,000 at the end of Perth, uh, in and around COVID, I, I believe, was a discussion at the time. So, is there a will to bring that back in? So, the motion's there. Um, is there any other discussion before I put that to the floor? Councillor Do we know when we have a program to do a bump up? Just the question was do we know when it's a program to do the runway um, Mr. Harper or Mr. Sands? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to answer that. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we are having testing uh, being carried out next month, and that will determine uh, the extent. And we were hopeful, all going well, to do it in, in spring, and we're thinking sort of October, November, uh, so that um, with the reduced number of flights, we might get more daylight hours on the job without interruption. So before Christmas, we could easily do the car park uh, in the same sort of package of work, but I have to say it's not essential for this next year given the flights. But if council wants it done, we'll get it done. Yeah, well, and that's good to the here in terms of the preparation required for the type of engineer to test up as opposed to um, car park line. Um, yeah. There is a there is a sort of change of element, but yeah, I'm happy um, that potentially again this if work that can be done and you know it's also how our working our workforce are they doing. Yeah, definitely I guess if it was here we would have lots of projects if we take that. I suggest in the current circumstances, uh, Your Worship, that it be added to the loan we're doing for the runway part of it. Just uh, it's all wrap it up as all one project. Thank you. Okay, well, the motion's there to add that 63,000. Uh, Put the motion to the floor. All those in favour, uh, let's raise your hand. So, please. Go. Uh, unanimous. Uh, carried. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, we we'll that. Let's get to go. That. Now, is there any other questions around that point before we sign this off? So, someone had to move those, uh, so we've got point one, um, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Councillor Wilkers. Yes, Tom. Sorry. Sorry. Sort of 
to the orchestra, the orchestra part of that, all those in favour, five, carry. So one, well, one, two, three, four. Um, now we're up to five. Um, so a prudent computation approach. Uh, and six, the computation document with Yahoo authority effectively himself um, and me. Uh, so let's do those two together. Can we get the most of the process? And these are charges. Uh, well, let's do those two, five and six. I think they're the same computation product. Here we go. Um, cool. That's fitting to the convert to those favor. Right, cool. Um, so we're going on to seven. Uh, Pose these charges. So we're discussing the changes as um, was. For me to discuss. Um, so let's move that. Uh, Councillor O'Reilly, Councillor Lyon, all those in favour, just say aye. Right, right. uh, cool. So eight is the proof expenditure of 100,000 to carry through, to carry forward. Um, let's move this up to nine. That's the house information. So eight, nine, kind of a move of a seconder. Councillor Gilchrist, uh, Councillor Wills, oh, Councillor Oliver, thank you. Uh, all those in favour, they say aye. Right. Gary, thank you. Go ahead. I'd appreciate it if we could just keep six and then slightly to give you that room to make minor comments for the conversation document. Yeah, I'll do that. 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 Yeah, I'll do so just some flight amendments need to be made uh, on point uh, six. Evan, Steve. Yeah. That was in use. Okay, so uh, just let the record reflect that. Um, so we Done on the seven, it's comfortable with that. Um, we go to uh, um, 10, which is consideration of any good business we don't have. Uh, 11, which is a minor uh, match in that, so I'll pass over that. That's pretty good. Thank you. Just should wake everyone up. Um, I wish to ask my fellow councillors to consider including a heritage book, Dev World Project. On the whole, because I believe there's been significant changes since it was agreed by a prior council, particularly in the past 12 months, which will put a huge burden on their district wage payers as well as the economic impact of COVID 19. At our last workshop, it was largely agreed the $4 million community fundraising element of the $23.2 million heritage project project would be difficult if not impossible to raise. That immediately puts an additional $4 million burden back on the great payers of the fund. I have serious concerns that the estimated budget is nowhere near rigorous enough. The Deborah Oil is a three-story triple brick building, but I note there is no budget of component for earthquake strength. So as far as I can tell, we're paying the heritage. I think almost certain they have a budget as well. The precinct project is minimal capital spend on top of other infrastructure projects, costing ratepayers nearly 55 million, which should be our priority. We also know the Eggenshire Art Gallery will be a significant spend, with an estimated 4 million needed to just get the former grant residence reopened. Upgrading and expanding the gallery space could easily double that if it is allowed under the trustee. The Timaru Library has a limited lifespan. The patch up of the roof is taken by an additional 10 year lifespan before another spend of perhaps in excess of $20 million. COVID 19 has changed the world, and most economists are talking a recession. All the business and rate payers are generally attempting to tighten their belts and reduce their spendings. There is already pressure starting to build on local councils for lower rates. 
but not provide relief in certain circumstances. We need to help boost the local economy at the moment, which should be on essential infrastructure, not what has been described to me as a vanity project. I'm a fan of the arts and the vibrant Timaru, but not at any cost. A decade ago, the community funded seven million dollars towards the 23.5 million sea bay project. There was a buzz around the project. It was well led with businesses and individuals contributing. There is no buzz around this project. Which, if we cut to the chase of putting a new back and a second new front in the theatre, moving the museum and having some extra display space and allowing for travelling exhibitions. In 2018, just over 1% of the rate payers gave an opinion on the matter. 300 people submitted to the Council's long term plan in favour of a total overhaul of the Theatre Royal. 100 said just do the rear of house, and just under that number said to do nothing. The same year the centre's noted Timmery District had a population of 46,000. It was not a ringing endorsement. I note that when the public consulted over the theatre world, they're only given the option, not given the option of a new state of the art complex. That was a contract It was Hobson's choice. I believe we owe the right house of consultants who have found the Hellfine Energy scenario before we spend millions of dollars without what I believe is a coherent strategy going forward towards our other problematic civic spaces. I know that code of conduct which has been approved calls for prudent stewardship of council resources. We have recently looked at the alternatives. A new complex has more cost but has the potential to deliver a much better return. Remember, in the front of the theatre royal was replaced just 20 years ago. So the only original piece of the theatre after this project will be a few parts being given. Are we really tired of keeping it in parts? The argument for a new museum is largely a shortage of space and space place for travelling exhibitions. Are we really prepared to spend 11.4 million on display areas, neither of which are urgent in this current moment? I would like the council to see take some time to consider a glam, a combination of an art gallery, library, archive, and museum space in one rather than the ad hoc approach we're currently taking to patch things up as we go. I believe that could save significant money in the long term if well pulled out, something future generations could look back on and think we were forward looking back then. Should my fellow council decide to carry on, I can only support the upgrade of the rear of the theatre world, which would make it functional safe space again. This is subject to the cost not flying out. I'm not in favour of spending two point million on the front of the house foyer extension upgrade. Others around the table have argued the decisions have already been made and we need to get on with them. As a new councillor, I've contacted local government in New Zealand regarding the process of the long term plan consultation and previous council decisions. I've been advised that never a, a second start. Councils are entitled to fair action and reverse previous decisions. I believe it's healthy to reopen the debate when positions and other circumstances come to light. In this case, COVID-19 and state of our other civic facilities. The council has also been asked to contribute, not, not fully fund, the likes of Steve Play, Geraldine Multisport Venue, the Outrage of Rang Park, all of the track, and the Elkhorn Energy Rugby Stadium, all of which are also worthwhile, but we're yet to come to a consensus on. They will also stimulate the economy, but where's the council in those years? I trust that all councils will receive my comments in a positive way, and I look forward to a robust discussion. Thank you. Okay, that's the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to object. Uh, any um, comments, better reports, or uh, anyone else want to speak to us? To Kevin Paddington. I'll oh, we'll come to you. Sorry, um, Councillor Wilson, we'll come to you um, soon. We're going to go to Councillor Burke. Hey, look, um, 
I was uh, quite, quite back at the initial planning stages of the long-term plan where back in 2017, uh, the council then put together a group uh, that was sponsored by the council and paid for uh, to give feedback around what was required moving forward and what should be going into the long-term plan. And so a group of people were put together, uh, been within that uh, meeting, uh, along with other, a couple of council councils, I believe. Um, a, a, an agency was appointed to uh, get us underway, and with the idea that we would give feedback to the council, what was required looking forward for the next 30 years in regards to facilities and, um, and Stuff for uh, Timaru. So, um, you know, I was one of the um, chairmen uh, of that group. It was a, a, a very good, strong group of uh, Timaru businessmen and workers that um, were very capable and uh, could see the yeah, other need to get involved here to ensure the direction uh, of Timaru and the, the, the flight facilities are. Uh, um, uh, in the point of what, what we need to do. So, um, after a couple of meetings with the CBD group, we realised that we didn't have any critical direction. And so, um, it was, we all came to the conclusion we didn't have a common denominator or a common goal. So, we, we recommended that we get a, a good uh, a high profile urban design. Uh, Urban design specialist in to take a stock take of our facilities uh, here in Timaru, and that was took everything into account around the um, you know, where the high street was, where we should be putting the uh, the big boxes, uh, what our strengths were, um, and um, obviously also looking at it, the sort of putting it together. And they, um, those things, the connection between the bay and the, and the city, um, transport routes, et cetera. So, you know, it, it was clear that we needed to get a, a, a proper urban design uh, firm in to, to contribute to what we're trying to achieve. And therefore, that was going to um, be fed into the long term plan. And that is exactly what we thought that we'd been, why we've actually put, uh, why the, the group had been put together for that purpose. So we went about working on that for around about a year. Um, the year was obviously a bit of a year. And um, lo and behold, all of a sudden this consultation document comes out asking if we want a beaver. They didn't even ask them. They didn't, we, we suggested what we thought needed to happen. They ignored us completely and just went off on a tangent. Didn't, well, this is what happened. Didn't, there was a group of people there that were willing, they weren't charging anything, and it was clear of money, and it was to be contributed and, and given for long term plan for the benefit of the right part. A long term plan. Okay, you need to get experts to do that. That's an urban design specialist, not an officer from the council. Okay, so, so what happened was we were working away over here, which we thought we were being sponsored for, by the council to do, being back in the long term plan. Lo and behold, the consultation document came out, and here we had one option. And if you went to fill out that document, you had no choice. But that either you didn't know or you were supporting the um, the fear of war upside and the, the, the historical um, thing. So it, it certainly wasn't the way we felt as a group, we were like, well, what's the point? And uh, so, and, and here we are now. Um, the, the obvious things weren't considered, such as some of the uh, the multi-purpose purpose facilities, which were in some of the reports that even the council had, 
and um, how the theatre world was unsuitable. So I guess I've got to um, agree with um, Councillor Billington that uh, we need to revisit this whole thing. It hasn't been done yet. Thank you, Worship. Um, we're talking about my mate, of course, the uh, the over time of the two. But uh, fascinating um, fascinating stories that we've heard. Um, but quite really, uh, we are talking about the South End of Stafford Street. Uh, we're looking at rejuvenating South End that with the kind of big drivers. We're not talking about the North End, we're talking about the South End, which is important to our community. And that was one of the big drivers about Get rejuvenating the South End and giving the city what it deserves around the Fair Royal. And the Fair Royal was the catalyst for the development. And the reasons why the councils from the day bought property to facilitate the kind of structure that perhaps Councillor Lee was suggesting. Uh, there's room to do all those things in the future as we go on. It's quite simply do it. So I don't know what where this is all coming from. I wouldn't know, but if it's your fault you do, and it's your view, I'll make sure. Um, I think it's um, it's just uh, unimportant that it's, if you talk about time and effort being put into projects over the years and schemes that we've had around this phase of ad nauseum in the past, wicked problems, uh, we have embarked on a, a project here and it's had a huge extent. If people came along with it, they wanted the project, they told us they wanted it. And we get the promise to the citizens and like the assets to move quickly to continue on the project. So I, I, I fail to see why now, for goodness sake, you have a move to want to revisit the whole thing at huge expense after we've done it with the groundwork, ending, and carrying on through as, we, as we've had niggling about the other buildings. Um, why would we now turn back? This is the this is not the end of the we're in advance mode, let me say. Let's get on with the project. Um, if we start now revisiting and, and rethinking uh, brainwaves on the hoop, as we've heard today and we've heard the last, um, we'll get nothing achieved this term at all. So I think it will be a wonderful council. We won't achieve nothing. We won't get it organised or built in this term. What a legacy some people will leave. Some people are more um, committed to our districts than others. And want to see something done. So this is what I want to do. Um, I'd like to let Councillor Bill to us sort of in the other one. Oh, yeah, we have yeah, 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 yeah. and then come back after the Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you, Councillor Bill. Go to Councillor Wills and then Councillor Bill. Thanks. Now, just jump over the next people in line. It's pretty hard to pick up on certain aspects, both Councillor Booth's and Pennington's discussion initially. And I've got a few things from Council Lyon, so I am going to get only, and I don't know what you're like over there, Council Lyon, but getting piecemeal bits at the moment. So um, I'll just allow the other councillors to jump in where they can. Okay, thanks. Uh, Council Lyon, Council Lyon, Council Lyon, Council Lyon, Council Lyon, approach it and everything you're talking about is feasible and I know exactly what you're about. Like, like, there's no, I'm not going to suggest for a second you can do um, and, and look, you know, from that point of view, yes, but from where we were as a previous council, from the understanding we had and what we were trying to achieve from a big picture, I just want to make it very clear that a lot of time, effort and consideration went into there. Echo and the former city council alliance said around it was this new model and it was just taking the elements of the museum and the art heritage presentation and everything. Um, and it's again like an only talk that out from now. I understand from that perspective, um, in terms of it's a shame to note that we're actually potentially communicating something with the group for a shovel ready uh, project um, that we were 100% behind and we wanted the government to come in and have part time for us or put in that consideration that now we can communicate actually we have. Uh, half of the council's advisor around uh, potential for it in the first place. And, and, and it's a shame that that's going to be communicated. Again, um, it's part of that, um, it was one of the real key ones. I think you brought up, Councillor Burke, uh, Government, are we actually more about uh, bottom up funding for projects? 
it's of this nature. And this is a really big one. And if we could have got that funding, that, that I'm sure there would be the uh, board proposals around the sorts of and we took the money and that's what they need to do. So there's, also, there's a lot of other elements that went into that. Um, in terms of um, the, uh, the red coat strengthening, the new change of the uh, of, of, of a premises fundamentally to a percentage in that automatically triggers the effects of the way you know, around the red coat strengthening. And there are fundamental things at the back of that vehicle which will change quite dramatically um, the percentage of earthquake. And so I understand we, we need to be very clear that the earthquake strengthening has to be part of that uh, budget. We also need to be very clear that the, the budget that we see, again, I've used this term before, we cut our cloth to fit that particular enterprise that we are anticipating and that is a multi use. Um, uh, um, proposal and that takes into consideration what we said about the ability to actually display and the museum in terms of um, presentation and our art gallery to extend the ability for them to have uh, an effect. Um, you know, I, 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 as I say, I want to really impress on you that there was significant consultation within the group. Now, I understand there might have been a lack of communication between your group and our, our, our council because you weren't here to feed into the long-term plan. It was a particular thing around CBD, around what we need to do, bringing our stakeholders together, and then lo and behold, uh, we were presented with uh, we need $250,000 for a plan. And that's 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 exactly the way it went. We need a quarter of a million dollars from you guys um, for a plan around something that we were asking you to put together for us and help us and feed into. And, and with that, um, one of the things that we were doing, and there was plenty of um, talk between us on how and why, and the philosophy that was around the suddenly Timaru, uh, and why we were looking at it. It's a, it's a shame that certain comments were made that it was, um, the project was only for a period of spirit, so it doesn't buy into the whole um, concept of, um, of what's better for the whole council. If you go to any uh, prevention town and look at their health in terms of what they're doing around culture and, and well-being and everything. It's, it's projects like that that you are later looked at and, and as a councillor, um, you, you're looked at as in terms of what benefit you provided for your community long term uh, and there. And, and so it's a lot of things that I buy into that. It's, 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 uh, I just, I think it, it was the original philosophy for it being there yeah, still holds true today. That's right. And, uh, um, thanks, Council Bird. Council Bird, really quickly, you've been a crack already. Mm -hmm. Why did you fund $200,000 for, for nothing to go to the CBD group, got them all underway for the specific purpose of putting and putting feedback into your multitude your, um, your plan, which you would need with them and not actually get out of the urban. Long term building design plan, like every other major. Oh, okay, no, sorry, no, no, sorry, I don't say that. Don't need to be someone of negligence without being able to get it up. So, uh, refrain or refrain. But I'm saying that that should be part of your long term plan uh, information that you would, that you had to feed that. It sounds like you're, that you sat here and you, and you decided. That, okay, we're going to do it. You're not you're actually blaming it when it comes to urban design. All right, so it should have been a, a long an urban design specialist came and put an overview, looked at the priorities for our district, and then lined them all up in different uh, timelines time and, and numbers around them and the benefit. And then you pick as a council what you're going to put in and offer that, that up to the rate payer in the consultation paper. That you send out with one item. Thank you, Councillor Roy. Let me know that's up. Councillor Roy, any wish? We voted to, to, to get the federal going. Wanted to, I'm just happy to back up what Councillor Roy and Councillor Burt said. We want to enhance the south end of the town. We can build a multi purpose building as we go along. And um, I, I just think if we're going to slow this up, I 
other questions. Yes, so we personally gather, and I know a hell of a lot of other people who have gathered. You know, we can't go back and start blaming each individual group of people over this whole thing. We, we accept them in time, we accept those rules. Uh, very quick, well, I'll just say that I've counted 10. Um, that helped me because I'm, um, you know, I feel I should be getting used to counsel at Birch Red Road. You know, to throw comments around the chamber that you have to negligent and other things. But it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not communication by and let's think about that. There was no negligence involved, and there was significant consultants um, spoken to and dealt with along that path. And I just, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Look, um, just one point that I think CB Group has set up in reference. Uh, we've been into this sort of plan review, um, just to, to, to know. Look, everyone's highlighted a, a lot of passion in this room. It's going to be uh, a great couple of years, and I think we're going to do some great stuff together. I think it's highlighted some challenges, but we're going to be coming to this approach. And it's up to us as the demographic elected group of individuals to work together and get to this uh, So I'll take the point. I would also like to make a point, and please, all of us, go away. And read our standing orders because that will be the last time uh, someone makes a speech that is pre prepared. 3.8.5 You shall not read these speeches get the permission of the person, but may refresh the memory by reference to notes. And that is it. So please be mindful of this, be mindful of your code of conduct and the remarks you're going to make to other members of this council, and um, let's fly by the rules, okay? By, um, would be disappointed if I saw references to those to those speeches in the paper, as I say. I'm happy for everyone to speak their mind, um, but if a speech of that sort of nature, the breach of our standards has been sent through the council, uh, through the um, hearing, that would disappoint me. You can all write your comments down and speak to them. Quite simple. We're all playing with the same words. Right, thank you. I think that brings that to an end. Um, we are now moving to no item 12, plus four items uh, required consideration until we move to 13, which is excluding the public. Put your hand up, Devin. What's that, sir? Oh, sorry, I missed. Councillor Oliver, yep, be quick. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Nigel. I just want to go back to, to Stu. I, I think I need to have a say on this. Um, look, I think he's brought up some really good points, and I think that the, um, I, I think that, uh, something needs to be done around that uh, theatre, the theatre, someone, a place for those guys to go. I think that, you know, I, I look at Timaru and I see lots of older type buildings and I think we've got a real opportunity here to join some of those with with some of those older buildings coming to the end of their life to be able to make something really good out and, and by utilising it into a multi, a better multi-purpose type uh, building, which will be modern and will have less upkeep and uh, will have less... Uh, obviously less maintenance in the future. We'll have low cost to the council, but obviously there'll be an initial, quite a big initial cost. Um, look, I think the goalposts have shifted quite remarkably, um, not just COVID. I mean, we, we probably need to stop blaming everything on COVID. Um, I think it, it's definitely changed the landscape on things, but um, I think, uh, you know, we've got, we'll have to look at Stafford Street. You know, what is going to have, happen in Stafford Street in six months? How is that picture going to look? Um, you know, is revitalising the South End really an option now? Um, so yeah, so I, look, I just wanted to have my point of view. I, I agree with several points that Councillor Pennington's made, um, and obviously other points that other councillors have made as well. But I think you know, we wanted a good, robust debate, and that's what we've got. So um, that was really good. But yeah, I, I just like to see something more modern, to be honest. I mean, I'm a bit sick of just seeing old, 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 old. That's all we seem to see. But anyway, that's just my point of view. I'm not sure we can get I don't think he's looking at it, so that's fine. I look at the answer, Oliver. That's good. All I was going to say in regards to that, I definitely, our northern end of the town, where we've potentially got investment and we've got projects, I think the southern end, the heart of our city, both ends, that all needs development and anything like that is going to bring in other development. The moment you start bringing vibrancy to the southern end, it will pull in other 
um, and business that will that, that, that works everywhere else. And we get that from a consultant, not from a layman as well. Um, so I believe it needs to, you know, we do need to focus on the whole of, of the CBD, not just the money. Thanks, look, and, uh, we've got lots of options on that site. You know, you're looking for imperative, you're looking for better, you know, there are options on that site for our stages um, that compete in. So I, I think we've got lots of opportunities on that. Um, but I uh, do appreciate you bringing this to council participation. Um, but we won't be doing any speeches in the future. Thank you. So we need to move to the exclusion of the public. Um, uh, move to Council Lyon, Council O'Reilly, all those in favour? Aye. Thank you.